During the 5th century BC, the Greek city-states united and drove a growing Persian Empire out of the West. As most empires do throughout history, they expand and begin to infiltrate on the borders of new civilizations, and that's what the Persians were doing. They were expanding westward across modern-day Turkey, which in the ancient periods was known as Anatolia, and now they were entering Greece. However, the Greek success was only able to be done under Spartan and Athenian leadership. So during the Persian Wars, the Greeks were led by a mix of leaders from both factions. Um, Miltiades, Themistocles, Eurybiades, Leonidas and Pausanias are the five key figures that were critical for the Greek success. Most significantly, the Greeks were willing to look beyond their political and cultural differences and instead unite to face a foe that would threaten their autonomy and liberty for the next century to come. And this is really worth noting because the Greeks never really agreed on these, on these matters like politics, like culture. So to see a united force sort of saw this Greek nationalistic presence and it was a key reason why they were able to drive the Persians out. Following the Greek victory over the Persians, Sparta retreated and ended hostility with the Persians. The Spartans were always conservative, non-imperialistic. They didn't want to conquer other lands. They were happy to stay within their own internal Spartan state. They didn't want to overextend themselves into distant regions, and they were happy to withdraw after the war had, be f had been finished. And some historians believe that the Spartans were always fearful of Helot revolt, and Helots were the slave population that lived in the Peloponnese west of Sparta. I did a, a full video on the Helots and um, looked at that topic in detail. If you want to check that out, that's on my channel too. But we could even say that the Spartan state wanted to remain isolationist after the Persian Wars, meaning to withdraw from foreign affairs. Um, and it was very happy to do that. However, Athens, which is a much more liberal uh, a society, more open to new ideas, were quite the opposite to the Spartans and wanted to continue their campaigns against the Persians with the aim of pushing them all the way back into the east and establishing a balancing coalition called the Delian League. In this balancing coalition, the Athenians created an alliance of city-states and islands that vowed against the Persian and Persian interests. So, imagine creating a little alliance of all the cities and states near the growing Persian Empire to stop the growth of Persia. This is what the Athenians were planning on doing, and they did very successfully. So the Athenians and the Greeks who were forever on the defensive during the 5th century, forever defending against Persian invasion, had now become the offensive power. It had begun to change and instead the Athenians become more aggressive. So the Delian League was very successful in containing Persian power uh, and influence in Anatolia and in the Mediterranean. Uh, most notably, in the year 469, the Athenians under the statesman Cimon successfully defeated the Persians at Eurymedon River, ending the threat of another Persian invasion of Greece. So this time, the Greeks are heading towards the Persians, heading eastward into their empire. And following the Battle of Eurymedon River, Athens was now the regional hegemon, or regional power of the Mediterranean, and it was becoming wealthier and wealthier through this coalition, the Delian League. They were able to get so wealthy because the Athenians organized a tribute system where Athens would require member states of the League to provide payments and ships to remain a part of the coalition. So in other words, these smaller states, and particularly island states in Greece, would have to pay sums to the Athenians, and as a result, the Athenians would protect them and ensure their membership into this alliance. So the Athenians are prospering a lot off this. The tribute was stored on the island of Delos, which, according to the Greeks, 
was a sacred place for the god Apollo. And perhaps the Greeks believed that, and more more so the Athenians, that Apollo would defend the treasury and ensure it was not tampered with or manipulated, even though some of these funds were allocated to build the famous Parthenon on Athens' Acropolis. While Athens defended members of the Delian League, the smaller city-states were now somewhat dependent on Athenian power and were heavily under Athenian influence, so the balance was very much in favour of Athens. However, this growing power and this and this Delian League that was established by the Athenians began to slowly transition into Athenian Empire, whereby Athens began using force to suppress revolts and dissatisfaction with the Athenian-led system. In the year 472 BC, the Delian League was starting to use force and it forced a non-league state called Charistus to become a part of the alliance. So the Athenians believed that Charistus was at the sun- southern end of the Euboea and the opposite the island of Andros, meaning that it was dangerous if it became a base for potential threats like the Persians. Other states, and especially the Spartans, watched events like this very closely because Athens is now leading Greece, it's leading the Mediterranean, but now becoming to be irresponsible and using force and not remaining diplomatic. In the year 469, so only three years after, the island of Naxos revolted against the Delian League and as a result, the island lost its autonomy and was forced by the Athenians to pay tribute and provide ships. So Athens seems to be the power and it's able to bully other smaller states into doing what it wants. But Athenian control over the league didn't stop there. In the year 465, Thasos, another member of the league, revolted. The Athenians, who were led by the son of Miltiades, once again Kimon, forced Thasos to surrender and acquired their gold mines in the process. The Athenians took full control of Thasos and established a colony there, so they're gaining economic and more power through forcing other smaller states to follow their rules, if you like, to follow the Athenian way, the Athenian order. In 464, Sparta experienced an earthquake which damaged the city and encouraged their slave population, the Helots, to revolt. The Athenians were aware of their imperial aggression and thought it would be diplomatic by sending a force of 4,000 hoplites to Sparta to help with the revolt. They want to try and connect to Sparta and say, hey, we're, you know, we're running the show here, we're being the leader, but we're still here to support you guys, really. But the Athenians were totally embarrassed when the Spartans dismissed the Athenian support and told them to go home. It was clear the Spartans did not want help. From the Athenians, nor did the Spartans want aid from them. There was a clear division in Greece. Sparta was the established power, and Athens was the rising power. There was a great competition taking place in the Mediterranean, and who wanted to be the the hegemon, the top power in the Greek world. Athens responded to this anti-Athenian tone by allying with one of Sparta's most significant enemies, which was Megara. Corinth was also at war with Athens, and in the year 457, war had broken out between Athens' ally Phocus and another civilization called Doris. Doris, however, was allied with Sparta, and the Athenians marched against the Peloponnesians at the Battle of Tanagra in the same year of 457. However, this was not a direct war against the Spartans, but instead the Peloponnesian League, so it was the first significant conflict between the Athenian-led Delian League and the Spartan-led Peloponnesian League. So, the Battle of Tanagra is the most significant instance where the Peloponnese, aka run by the Spartans, is at war and in conflict with the Athenians and the Delian League. But that's all for today's video. I hope this provides a good explanation on the origins of the Peloponnesian War, and we'll be looking to add a new episode continuing on from this series. If you like this, please like, comment and subscribe for more content.